Hey guys, Kevin Cleary here with a knife video for you. Today we have the Real Steel Megalodon, and this of course is the titanium version with the M390 steel, sort of the, the higher end version of this knife. We've already reviewed the, the more budget friendly version with the G10 scales and 14C28 end blade, and I was fairly happy with that knife, and I will say I'm fairly impressed with this one as well. Uh, before I get into why that is, let me give you just a little bit of background. This design uh, was not a real steel design. It comes from Carson Tech Labs. Most people probably aren't familiar with them. I looked at them a couple years ago. They had a couple designs that I was kind of interested in. I never ended up uh, pulling the trigger on any, but they've been around for a while as sort of a, a high-end Chinese manufacturer. Uh, never done anything spectacular. Uh, and I don't know how the business relationship works between them and Real Steel or how Real Steel got this design. Uh, but you can see they do credit, hold on, designed by Carson H there on the blade. Okay, the original Megalodon uh, from Real Steel, which was the first time Real Steel introduced this knife, had some differences. This is sort of the Megalodon 2, if you will. Um, the original version had thumb studs there, and you can actually see how, see how the handle is designed to sort of wrap around there. Initially, that little wrap was designed to accommodate thumb studs, or that would be blade stops when they when they uh, contacted the, the frame right there. Obviously, that's gone in favor of uh, a stop pin here in the back of the handle. The blade on the original was S35VN with a stone wash finish and a larger cutout here, almost a finger choil, more so than just a sharpening choil. Uh, it did have bearings, but the bearings were ball bearings rather than needle bearings, which this knife features. Uh, and so those are the kind of the basic overview of the differences between this and the original Megalodon. Now, let's get into this one because, I and I, I will say this, I do think the changes they made were good and I'm glad that they, they did those things. I do think it's a better knife now, although I don't think it was a bad knife originally. And there are a few older reviews out there you can find if you want to know more about the original uh, Megalodon. So let's get on to the size and weight here. This knife is eight and three quarter inches overall, so fairly large knife. Uh, the blade is three and 15 sixteenths, so almost four inches of blade. The handle length on this is four and 15 sixteenths, so almost five inches of handle. It's half an inch thick and it weighs 4.28 ounces, which is fairly lightweight for a knife of this size. In fact, it's very lightweight for a knife of this size. Part of the reason for that is you can see those heavily milled out liners, or I mean heavily milled out scales, and that does cut down on the weight an awful lot and makes this a really, really nice knife to carry. Uh, consider that for only 4.28 ounces, you're getting uh, a full four inch blade, uh, a lot of cutting power. So really, really nicely done in terms of, you know, what you get as a tool compared to what you have to carry uh, in terms of weight and size in your pocket. Blade on this, is M390 steel. It's obviously a drop point with a satin finish. You can see the, the fairly fine, you can almost see, you know, see some reflections there. So it's a pretty fine satin finish. Uh, and actually I really, really like the way this has been done. Uh, one difference you may notice between this and the uh, more budget friendly Megalodon is there's a slight difference in the way this is finished here. The grind on the, on the budget Megalodon is straighter and a little more abrupt. I do like the, the smoothness of uh, the way that they've done this plunge grind uh, over the original. The performance on this is very good. Of course, it's M390, so it holds an edge really, really well. Uh, and the edge is nice and thin, so it slices very well. And this blade stock is not exceptionally thick blade stock, so you combine fairly thin blade stock. I mean, it's not so overly thin, but thin enough blade stock with a full flat grind and a nice edge geometry, and you've got a real performer there in the blade in terms of uh, just about any cutting task you could think of. The one drawback, of course, being, and we often say this about full flat ground knives, you know, think of the Spyderco paramilitary or military or any number of them, uh, is you do end up with a pretty fine point. So you're not, this is not going to be a knife you want to drop or, you know, do a lot of prying with at the point. You'll break that off fairly easily, uh, I would uh, I would think. So consider that a bit of a warning for you. Uh, but I, you know, a thinner blade like that, I guess you've got to ask yourself what you're planning to do with your knife. And if you really feel the need for it, maybe go with something a little thicker and more robust. But this, in terms of actual cutting power, is, is very, very good. Now, I want to move on and talk about lockup and deployment. And in this 
area specifically, the knife really, really, really shines. Okay, the, the action on this and just the, the way that they've implemented uh, the various things, things that they've done uh, is just exceptional. Uh, really, really smooth, really nice detent, really good fast deployment, which can be difficult to achieve with a pretty light blade uh, the way this one is. Uh, and so let's let's kind of work through some of those details. Of course, it's a, a titanium frame lock. Uh, one thing I think that is cool here is the way they've done this cutout is with that little wave feature. That's going to add some stability to the lock bar. There's also an over travel stop that extends from the stainless steel lock bar insert. And the lock bar tension is really nice. It's just comfortable to actuate. You can easily get your finger in there. Uh, it's not, you know, you're not straining yourself to, to unlock the knife. And yet the detent, even though the lock bar is not super stiff, the detent is still exceptional. So um, it's, it's essentially, you know, when it comes to all of those little features, this is sort of the, the uh, what would you say, the, um, a three bears type of knife. If you remember when uh, the, the three bears were visited, there were certain things that were just right. And you know, I've got to say that they did a lot of things just right. The detent is just right. The smoothness is just right. The comfort of the flipper tab is just right. The lock bar tension is just right. Uh, and so that's, I, I've got to say, when a company gets a number of things right like that, I do appreciate it. Uh, now, let me talk a little bit about the bearings and one of the reasons this is so good, I've got to say, you know, the action on this is, you know, really, really outstanding. And one of the reasons it's so good is because of the bearings they use. Rather than ball bearings, I've got, I've got a little diagram here. So this is my artist's rendition of the bearings here. So this is going to be a carry caged ball bearing. We've got this plastic cage and a bunch of little steel balls inside of it or ceramic balls or whatever. Um, if you have dual row ball bearings, it would be more like this. Okay, and I do have a knife that I'll offer as an example that has dual row uh, ceramic bearings. But rather than ball using ball bearings at all, this knife uses uh, roller bearings or needle bearings depending on what you're used to calling them. So instead of all these little balls, there's actually these little steel rods. Uh, it kind of puts me in mind of the grocery stores where, I don't know if you'll, you'll remember this, but back when I was a kid, grocery stores would often have these lines of rollers that you could roll stuff down. And, and so essentially that's what you have inside the bearing on this knife as well as a couple of other real steel models. And it is uh, it, it, the the feel of that, the action that that provides is just amazing. Uh, so I've got to give a lot of credit there for, to Real Steel for using those roller bearings. They're exceptional. All right, so in terms of action, yeah, it's, it's unbelievable, okay? Better than uh, many knives that I own that would cost a lot, a lot more, and way better than a lot of knives in the same price range, okay? so. Uh, that is a real achievement, what they've done with the action on this knife. Uh, moving on then to the handle. First thing to point out is, of course, you've got full titanium handle with a nice stonewash finish on it. Um, titanium standoff construction. There's one weird thing I'll point out here. Well, you can see the stop pin. Uh, there's, so there's only a couple of points of contact here. And then back here, you've got the standoffs. But there is that one little piece there. Notice the hole through it to accommodate a lanyard. And what I will say about that is it's it's kind of weird and out of place. Uh, it's really small, so most, you know, 550 cord would never work. Uh, even the way that they've got this so tightly in here, you'd actually have a hard time fitting 550 cord through, even if you're just gonna wrap it around rather than uh, actually try to put it through the hole where it would never fit. So you'd have to use definitely something else other than 550 cord um, and, and it would have to be a fairly fine piece of string to put a lanyard on this which uh, to me uh, you know I, they could have just done without this extra piece altogether. Kind of a weird thing. Uh, pocket clip is very functional and it's kind of made to have that same wave pattern that goes along with the knife. It's only so-so, I'm not crazy about the design. Now, one thing I anticipated being a problem is notice how the clip lands right near the relief cut for the lock bar. I was sure this would be an issue and it would cause my, my pants to catch on that edge when they were coming past the clip, 
but with quite a bit of carry on this, it has not been a problem. So uh, although I thought it would be a problem, it's been really good. And of course, with that relief cut and every, they've tried to sort of use those flowing lines and, and they do look pretty nice. The design, I, I will say, is fairly well done. In terms of ergonomics, the knife is really comfortable. There's tons of, you know, lots of real estate here, so uh, no issue with that. Uh, it's pretty comfortable in any grip you may want. The one small hot spot is going to be right on your index finger, as if it jams hard into that uh, flipper tab. The jimping on the flipper tab here, that is helpful when you're flipping the knife, also becomes a little rough on your index finger uh, as a bit of a hot spot, although nothing crazy. Also, I would appreciate a little bit of jimping back here somewhere, either right on the back spine of the blade right there, or even a little bit on the handle, or a bit of both would be ideal, as my thumb tends to land right there. Okay, so a couple little ergonomic issues, but certainly nothing serious. Let's go ahead and get some comparisons going here. Uh, this knife is a pretty budget-friendly offering. You know, if you like titanium frame locks, uh, and you like really well-made titanium frame locks, you know, you're probably used to spending 200 and up, but this does come in at under $200. So it, it is a really, really solid offering for the price. And in fact, does a few things, especially lockup and deployment, better than any knife that I can think of in that price range. And in fact, better than a lot of knives in a much higher price range. Now, before we get to some of those, uh, let's pull in a pair of two. You know, similar blade shape, a little bit lighter, uh, but, or I mean, similar blade design, you know, full flat grind, very long pointy blade, uh, similar performance in terms of a fine cutting edge and a fairly fine tip, uh, and again, a very easy to carry, comfortable carry knife in the Para 2. Uh, one other real steel I'll bring in before we go on to some more comparable knives. Uh, the Real Steel H6 Elegance, similar blade shape again. And if you're interested in this, I would say you'd probably appreciate this, or of course, the um, budget version of the Megalodon. And that's a very good knife, but it's it's a fair bit different from this. Okay, uh, the shape is the same, the blade shape is the same, but there are you know different materials, different construction, things like that. Now, let's get to some knives that are probably a little more similar. Here is the Wee Knives 601, uh, probably my favorite of the Wee Knives, and uh, it does have, you know, some similar things, ceramic bearings, uh, nice action, uh, a little more compelling in terms of looks. You know, with the Wee Knives you are paying more, but you're getting some really cool milling and some interesting designs out of that. Uh, so I've got to say this is pretty comparable and, and a bit of a step up, mostly for the extra effort that's gone into um, just colors and milling and those kinds of things. And that's, you know, the Wee Knives are kind of known for that. Uh, let's see, what else have we got here? Uh, a really comparable knife I find is the Zero Tolerance 0452. Uh, there are a couple little things that I would, uh, where I would say um, the the Megalodon, of course, is cheaper. The steel is, well, in this case, uh, the steel is not the same, or, or in this case, we have to consider it differently because this happens to be the, the limited run. But in general, this is going to have S35VN, uh, and this is going to be M390, which is a bit of a step up. Uh, as well, the blade shape is going to be just a little thinner on the real steel, uh, but very comparable knives. You know, the price point is not that far off. The, the size and weight is very close. Uh, so there's a lot of similarities. And I could see someone who liked either one of these knives really liking the other. Okay, uh, one more comparison for you before we move on. And this is taking things sort of up one more step from what we've looked at so far. This is the Riat Knives Torrent. Uh, probably my favorite Riat and still my favorite, even though they have come up with a few designs since then. Um, but in terms of, of quality, in terms of, you know, the action on the knife and the overall uh, quality of the build, of the knives I've shown you, this is actually the closest in terms of how just <laughs> pleasant it is to actuate this knife and, and use this knife. You know, when you hold it, you're just like, wow, this is such a well done knife. And you get the same thing from uh, the Megalodon. So those are some comparisons for you. Let's move on to sort of my overall impressions or my overall take on 
the knife. We'll move it to the show side for kind of wrapping things up. Uh, slightly different design. It's not doing anything overly profound, but it's sort of got these smooth flowing aesthetics. And I do think that that is pretty cool. Uh, the blade, of course, is well done in a very good steel. The construction is exceptional and the action on this is unlike anything you're going to touch in the $200 price range. And in fact, better than even knives you're going to touch in the five or six or a thousand dollar price range. So really, really well done on that front, especially. Overall, I think this is a great knife. I would highly, highly recommend it. Uh, you know, if it's yeah, the reality is in, in terms of what other knives you might be interested in if you like this one, uh, this just does a lot of stuff right. It's comfortable, it's lightweight, and again, that action is unbelievable. Every time I pick it up and use it, I, I have to kind of remind myself that this is a fairly budget-friendly knife. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know what you think of uh, this Real Steel, and there is a, another comparable knife from Real Steel, the S571. I don't know if there are any available, uh, but maybe someone can follow up with that in the comments below. We'll talk to you soon. Oh wait, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, and we will talk to you soon.